On this week's program, we talk to the Kansas Foundation for Agriculture in the Classroom's Executive Director, Nancy Zinger Manata. We'll also have features from Kansas Corn, Kansas Wheat, and the Kansas Farm Bureau, and our weekly updates from the Kansas Livestock Association and market information from Pinion. I'm Ken Rogers. This is Authentic Ag. Brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org, and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, USDA says farm sector production expenses, including those associated with operator dwellings, are forecast to decrease by $4.6 billion in 2020, in nominal terms that is, which means not adjusted for inflation, a 1.3 drop from the previous year. The expenses represent the costs of all inputs used to produce farm commodities They strongly affect the farm profitability. Although the overall production expenses are projected to drop, there are differences between some specific expenses. Specific expenses forecast to increase in 2020 account for about 69% of the total and are projected to collectively rise by $6 billion relative to 2019 before adjusted for inflation. Now, these include the two largest categories, feed purchases and cash labor. Now, in contrast, expenses expected to decrease account for 31% of total expenses and are forecast to collectively decline by $10.6 billion between 2019 and 2020. Now, more specifically, livestock and poultry purchases expected to drop 7.5%, pesticides by 2.1%, and oil and fuel spending by nearly 14%. Interest rate costs are forecast to be at their lowest level since 2014, dropping by 27 percent from 2019. That's a result of historic low interest rates. The Kansas City Federal Reserve Bank says that the outlook for agriculture credit conditions in the 10th District improved in the third quarter, that due in part to rising commodity prices and additional government and aid to producers. After dropping sharply in the second quarter due to disruptions of COVID-19, prices for most ag commodities began to rebound in the summertime. The Fed reports say the increasing demand supported additional increases in crop prices through the third quarter and into the month of October that expanded profit opportunities for many producers going into the harvest season. As a result, credit conditions deteriorated at a significantly slower pace. The number of bankers reporting declines in farm income and loan repayment rates dropped from the prior quarter. And the ink is officially dry on the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership that was signed by China and 14 other nations recently. The signing ceremony came about eight years of talks leading up to one of the world's largest regional free trade agreements. Now, the pack is somewhat limited in scope. It still covers about 2.2 billion people, and that's larger than any previous regional free trade agreement and likely helps improve China's image as the dominant economic power in Southeast Asia. It also comes as the U.S. withdrawal from sweeping trade deals appear to be reshaping some of those global relationships. Other countries continue to sign trade deals some trade experts say that American importers may lose ground. Well, more on these and other ag stories at agview.net. Stay with us. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. To remind consumers across the country that beef is the only protein they want to feed their families this holiday season, Beef It's What's For Dinner will return to broadcast television. For the first time since 2003, Beef Checkoff funded advertisements will air a limited number of times during the Hallmark Channel's Countdown to Christmas holiday programming event. New 15-second Beef It's What's For Dinner drool log ads will appear throughout late November and December. 
The ads are based on the two hour long video of a prime rib roast slowly cooking over an open flame that was successfully released last year during the holidays, garnering more than 14 million views. In addition to bringing the iconic brand back to broadcast television, Beef It's What's For Dinner will help consumers navigate how to make the perfect holiday meal through digital and social media efforts. Consumers will be able to access new versions of the drool log videos on social media. The landing page on BeefIt'sWhat'sForDinner.com will be shoppable, meaning visitors can click on any beef recipe and be taken to an online shopping cart for their local grocery store. Beef It's What's For Dinner also will be working with two partners to run e-commerce campaigns during the month of December, aiming to increase beef sales, and the brand will leverage food and nutrition influencers and celebrity chefs to create their own beef recipes for the holiday season. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. You can always email me at Corey at SureCropFertilizers.com and with any questions you have, we'll be glad to answer it and work with you. And joining us is Nancy Zenger Beneda from the Kansas Foundation for Agriculture in the Classroom, or KFAC as some might know. So, and Nancy, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, and we really appreciate the opportunity to tell our story and continue to connect other people with our organization. Now, there's a big event coming up in just a few days. We're going to talk about that in our second part, but first, uh, you know, let's let's get get an update of what's going on with the uh, Kansas Foundation for Ag in the classroom. It's been around for quite a while, and uh, maybe people remember what it was when it first got started, but. Kind of give us an update on how things are going right now. Sure, and thank you. We're really focusing on developing virtual resources right now. As you know, uh, education is looking a lot different today than it did even a year ago, of course, with the pandemic. So our focus over the last six months has been to develop virtual resources, and we've worked with our AgriLand partners to host virtual AgriLand on our website. And we're really proud of that accomplishment. And we see that continuing to grow in the future as we add resources and engage more instructors in the free resources we have available to them. Well, it seems like, especially over the last uh, now, what, eight, nine months, uh, folks have done in-home learning. Uh, and especially with, with those school-aged children, and looking for just good sources and and what a better way than to do you know learn more about agriculture uh, right there at home with some of those sources uh, you know you have a, a long history of, of folks that have contributed and, and this is this is you know stuff that has um, it, it does pass muster i mean it is it is uh, it is the right stuff it isn't just well let's just teach them this well, I appreciate that. We believe it's so important to connect our youth with agriculture. As we know, the current generation is somewhere between three and five uh, generations removed from direct agriculture, and young people are really losing that connection as to where their food, fiber, and fuel comes from. And we think it's really important that we're reaching out to our young people and educating this current generation 
on where they're going to find their food in the future and how agriculture is going to meet those food demands. I mean, we know our population is growing and that agriculture is going to continue to need to provide for that growing population. So it's really important that youth understand that. And that's why we work so hard to reach our mission of connecting Kansas classrooms or classrooms with Kansas agriculture. Because we vision that someday there will be ag in every classroom every day. Well, I think that's a great, uh, a great uh, idea, and we hope that happens. And we're going to take a break right now, and we come back, we'll uh, talk about how you can uh, be part of that effort. Uh, Nancy uh, Zinger Beneda is joining us, Kansas Foundation for Ag in the Classroom. Stay with us more in just a moment. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. And joining us this week is uh, Nancy Zinger Benada who was with the Kansas Foundation for Ag in the Classroom. And uh, if you want to contribute uh, to part of this educational effort, uh, there's a big event coming up in just a, a few days. Uh, Nancy, let's uh, tell us about it. Well, thanks for giving us the opportunity to share. We're really excited to announce that our big promotion, Giving Tuesday, happening on December 1st, is gonna have a special honorary chair. Dan Kirshen, the chairman of the Ag Senate Committee, uh, is joining us as our honorary chair. We'll be hosting that event out of the Wheat Center in Manhattan, Kansas. You'll see some information about how you can get connected and specifically you can go to our website at kansasagclassroom.org and that's ksagclassroom.org to learn more about the event. If you happen to be in the Manhattan area, we have a special surprise for those that stop by the wheat sender. Cindy Falk is making some fantastic cinnamon rolls, so you can drop by your donation, uh, pick up a homemade cinnamon roll, uh, also pick up her new recipe book that will feature the recipe for the cinnamon rolls that we're giving out that day, and uh, fill up your coffee or your cup with some some fresh coffee so uh, if you happen to be in Manhattan we'd love to see you if not please join us on our website uh, you can give through the portal there and again that's Kansas Ag Classroom K-S-A-G classroom.org well it may be worth regardless of where you are around the state of Kansas just to drive to Manhattan and get one of Cindy's great cinnamon rolls those are uh, those have been tremendous and I think anybody that knows me knows that uh, I do enjoy them, you can see by my size. But uh, Nancy, uh, let's, uh, again, you know, it's, it's kind of one of these deals where, you know, little mites can grow into big mites, as they say, and say, well, I don't maybe have a whole lot of money, but, you know, I, I know $10 and 100 people give $10, that can be an impact. And, and really where we are, it's critical uh, to educate folks to know where their food comes from. Not only that, but just to have the correct information. 
That's so true. Every dollar makes a difference. And we're giving those dollars back to teachers and educators with free lesson plan kits, um, free Kids Connection magazines, and then also access to our virtual resources that are on our website. So we really are putting as many of those dollars to programming for educators as we can. And I think you make such a good point. It's so important uh, that we're reaching those young people because uh, they need accurate information to help support the future of the ag industry. And that, in fact, is our theme this year as we look at our fall campaign and, and Giving Tuesday. It's invest in the future of agriculture because we know agriculture right now faces so many challenges with the misinformation that's out there about the industry. And, you know, this is just, one way and really a very effective way to advocate for agriculture and meet some of that misinformation by directly educating our youth with the truth and the facts about agriculture and the impact that agriculture has on their lives and their quality of life. To help share the message with Kansas Foundation for Ag in the Classroom, uh, Give It Tuesday is coming up December the 1st. Nancy, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. We really appreciate spending some time with you today. Nancy Zinger. Oh, I, to miss, I knew I messed that one up. Hang on here. Nancy Zinger <laughs> Beneda has joined us for Kansas Foundation for Ag in the Classroom. Stay with us more in just a moment. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. Hi, this is Sharon Thielen, and I'm here to give you the Kansas Corn Update. Um, I serve as the Director of Education for Kansas Corn, and this school year has been um, not the typical school year that we traditionally prepare for, but one that we um, still have made a lot of adjustments um, in order to really help our teachers um, during this time of change. And so this last weekend, we were very excited to be able to host a seed to stem workshop in Sublette, Kansas, where we, where we were able to get 17 teachers together um, to learn new labs and how you can incorporate those in the classroom during a normal school year, but also during this time of hybrid learning. Um, in addition, we have been making adjustments to our guest speaker opportunities where we have two um, retired teachers who have agriculture background who traditionally visit classrooms and they do hands-on um, activities with them, teaching them about the ag industry. Um, but what we've done is we still offer that, but we may do the presentation outside or we'll do it virtually, but we send them the, the teachers the materials in advance. So it's still a hands-on opportunity for students to learn even in this time of virtual learning. Um, but in addition, we have had a team of great teachers that have adjusted all of our labs. We're up to 93 labs now on our lesson library, um, but many of them now can be used for in-home use. So KansasCornSTEM.com, all spelled out, um, is the place to go for all these great resources for anybody um, looking for um, something fun to do both in the classroom and at home. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. 
Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Kansas farmers are just finished planting and watching their 2021 wheat crop emerge, but world buyers are already highly anticipating next year's harvest. Each month, USDA keeps producers and end users up to date on the latest projections for U.S. and global wheat production, use, exports, and stocks in its WASD report. The WASD report provides a month-to-month -month overview of global agricultural trade with updated estimates as weather events unfold and crops in both the U.S. and abroad emerge mature and are harvested. The report provides valuable insights into the supply and demand factors that influence the price of wheat. In a recent report issued October 9th, USDA projected U.S. wheat production in the 2020-2021 marketing year will decrease 5% year-over-year to 1.83 billion bushels due to lower average yields and decreased planting area. In comparison, competing countries like Russia and Canada are expected to see substantial increases from the five-year average. Despite this decline, USDA expects U.S. wheat exports to reach 974 million bushels, up slightly from last year and the five-year average. USDA projected hard red winter wheat production to hit 658 million bushels this year. Hard red winter wheat exports are estimated at 412 million bushels, with commercial sales of 198 million bushels already booked as of October 1st. Mexico remains the top customer for U.S. hard red winter wheat at 40 billion bushels, followed by China, Nigeria, and Japan. Follow U.S. Wheat Associates reporting on worldwide supply and demand at uswheat.org. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. Hi everyone, Marita Hauser here from the Kansas Farm Bureau Women's Leadership Committee. As I'm sure most of you know by now, the Farm Bureau Annual Meeting will be virtual this year. Normally at this time, the Women's Leadership Committee would be seeking donations for our silent auction at the annual meeting. Over the years, the silent auction has raised over $105,000. We've averaged over $5,500 each year over the past 10 years. These dollars are used to help promote agriculture in our counties in Kansas. With the annual meeting going virtual this year, we won't be able to host the silent auction like we normally do. You still have a great opportunity to give back. We're inviting you to rally around our Farm Bureau brand, along with our Farm Bureau Financial Services family, by supporting Kansas Farm Bureau's End Hunger Campaign. We encourage not only your county Farm Bureaus, but also all of you as individuals who usually help promote our auction by purchasing items. We invite you to donate to the End Hunger Campaign at www.org slash end hunger. To date, this program has distributed nearly $89,000 
to food pantries in 95 Kansas counties. That's great, but we all know there's more to be done. The Women's Leadership Committee is excited to partner to support the End Hunger Campaign. It helps meet immediate hunger concerns in our counties. It also helps support creative ways that our communities can work together to reduce food insecurity. We're farmers and ranchers. We feed people. That's what we do. Please continue this tradition by giving a generous donation to the End Hunger Campaign. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Good morning. Zach Gotot here with Keiko Eisen. Been another interesting week here in the markets. We saw stocks reach new highs on the heels of the announcement of the Pfizer vaccine, as well as the commodity space getting a jump start on the week as well. News that we may have a handle on COVID obviously helped out the livestock markets. For now, it seems the trade likes the thought of avoiding shutdowns and packing plants. Both fats and feeders are well off its lows two weeks ago and back to levels we saw this summer. Over in the grains, we had another slap on the back from the USDA folks with their bullish supply and demand report. A lot of folks in the trade were expecting to see a slight reduction in both corn and soybean production numbers, and boy did we get it. Not only were numbers lower, they were well below the analyst's lowest guesses. We saw them trim two bushels of corn and one bushel off of yield of soybeans from the October report. That in turn gave us a 1.7 billion bushel ending stock number in corn and 190 million bushels in soybeans, both of which are at seven year lows. This obviously tightens up the balance sheet and if demand continues, outlook seems friendly. As the dust settles after digesting this fresh set of numbers, a lot of eyes are going to be switching to the folks down in South America and how their growing season progresses. Much of the area has seen decent moisture as of late, but they still have a ways to go before they raise a crop. In times like this, it's easy to get caught up trying to wade through the news and other folks' opinions. If we look back over the years, whenever we're at our highs, the news can't be more bullish. Just like when we're at the lows, the market can only go down. Whether you think we've got another $2 left in us, or we're already way overpriced, doing something at these levels makes sense. But give yourself a chance to win and be ready for whatever the market does. If you got questions on these topics or any markets, give us a call here at 888-452-8751. I'm Zach Gotot. Have a great day. Well, thank you for joining us. And even though 2020 has brought us many challenges, it's time of the year especially. It's time to pause and think about all the things we're thankful for. I'm Ken Rogers. We'll see you next time on Authentic Ag. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply.